Dan Novak, another impressive performance. You're through to your 10th uh, Australian Open semi-final against someone you've never played against, uh, Tommy Paul. Can you say a few words about him? Uh, well, I, I, I know how he plays. I never faced him on the court, but uh, he's been around for a few years. So I watched him play quite a bit, especially during uh, this tournament. And he's been playing probably tennis of his life and uh, very explosive, very dynamic player, uh, quick, uh, very solid backhand, likes to step in, dictate the, the, the point with the forehand. Great, great service motion. I think he can hit all the spots uh, with the serve. So very complete player. I think he's got a coach that has been around with some top players for many years. So, you know, it's uh, first semifinals for him. So, of course, you know, he doesn't have much to lose. I'm sure that he's going to go out trying to, to play his best tennis. <clears throat> Back. Um, obviously, it's been well documented about the, the injury coming back for, to Adelaide, but is this as confident as you've felt at an Australian Open, given everything that's going on and, and how emphatic you've been in your past two matches? Well, I, ca I can't really um, say that this, this is as confident that I ever felt because I've had some you know, incredible uh, seasons, uh, years here in Australian Open and some matches that are really unforgettable for me. Um, tough to compare because I've, I've been fortunate to really uh, live through a lot of success uh, in Australian Open. Um, but last two matches, <coughs> uh, playing against uh, two guys that are really good players, informed players, to beat them uh, uh, dominantly in three sets is something that uh, is definitely, um, you know, uh, something that I want in this moment, something that sends a message to all my opponents remaining in the draw. And so with this kind of game, of course, the confidence level rises, uh, considering, as you mentioned, the circumstances. So, you know, I feel about feel good on the court, better and better as the tournament progresses. Uh, I've been in this situation so many times in my life, in my career. Um, you know, never lost the semifinals in Australian Open, and hopefully they'll stay, that will stay the same. <clears throat> Do you sense a greater determination this year compared with previous years, for whatever reason, hamstring, what happened last year, age, whatever it might be? Well, I, I don't think that uh, I lack determination. I, I always, um, you know, try to give my best, uh, particularly in Grand Slams, because at this stage of my career, you know, those, those are the, the tournaments that, that count the most, of course. Um, but you could say that there's something extra this year, yeah. You, you could say because of the, yeah, as you, as you mentioned, the injury and, uh, you know, what happened last year. And then I just, you know, wanted to really uh, do well. And, and so far I have, I have a perfect score in Australian hard courts, you know, in Adelaide and, and here. And I've been playing better and better. So I couldn't ask for a better situation to be in at the moment. Oh. With what Tommy and a couple other guys did here, what Francis did in New York, do you think it's good, important, maybe you don't think it matters for American men to be relevant in the top levels of tennis? Well, look, America for our sport is an extremely important uh, country. Uh, so we have some of the biggest tournaments in the world played there in the North American continent. Uh, I think it is important that that we see successful American uh, men and women doing well, and and we have you know America is producing historically always you know top players, um, and and now you have a list of maybe four or five young players that are you know knocking on the door of the top level. So uh, I think that's great for our sport. You know we want to see you know uh, young successful players that are coming from big country like America, of course. To James Hyung-Pong about a guy shouting out from the crowd. I mean, it's happened in a, a few different matches now. Is it is it frustrating that it keeps happening? If it keeps happening, it, you know, it keeps happening. What I mean, there's not much I can do about it. Uh, it's just few individuals. I, I can't, you know, judge the whole crowd because of the few individuals. I mean, uh, absolutely not. You know, but. 
as I said, if somebody steps over the line and starts making comments that are not related to support of the other player, you know, he, he just wants to provoke and insult, and then, you know, stepping over the line is something that I, I react to. You know, maybe not first time, second time, but after that, yes. And then I asked the, the chair umpire to, to react. And after that, you know, I, I heard him, but he was supporting uh, Rublev, uh, and he was not making any bad comments till the end of the match, so I didn't have any any complaints about that further on. How do you sort of characterize other countries with a specific playing style? Do you think there's an American style? In terms of tennis style, um, uh, how yeah, Americans play? Heard you talk about like the Russians. Or how they dress say, up like a uh, big like foe. This, this have <laughs> great back end. <laughs> the big foe's uh, attire was a uh, talk of the tournament. This, this. Um, I think, well, I think that uh, American, North American style of tennis is, uh, is different from Europe, uh, Eastern Europe particularly, or South America. I think each part of the world has a different school of tennis, so to say, and style. Uh, how I would uh, describe North American, it would be probably the kind of a style of tennis that is focused a lot on the uh, powerful and accurate serve. Um, and and, um, and an aggressive style coming to the net. Um, and, you know, of course, some of the biggest champions of our sport that came from the United States um, had different styles, like John McEnroe to Pete Sampras to Andre Agassi, right? Andre was probably the first guy that had returned so well and stayed back and not, you know, after Borg and not came in as, not coming in to the net as much as, you know, the other guys that were doing you know, 90% of the players were serving volleying. You know, nowadays you don't get you don't get to see that pretty much at all. Um, so the tennis has um, evolved and has changed uh, definitely. Uh, the technology, the racket, the strings, the balls, uh, the, the speed of the surfaces. Uh, not so many years ago, you had three out of four slams played on grass. So. Uh, yeah, I think it was 88 or 89 was the last years that we had, you know, also Australian Open played on grass. So a lot has changed. Um, you know, it is the time where where we have more uh, more sliding, more, uh, you know, uh, tennis from, from back, back of the court, you know, focused more on, on, on baseline rallies. But I, I think it's good, like somebody like uh, Cressy, for example, from the United States, that, that you know has a huge serve and basically comes in after first and second serve. That's, it's nice to see that. Uh, I think it's good to have some variety for the fans as well to, to be able to enjoy different styles. Last thing. Uh, you have a question regarding media narratives in general. Obviously, there are talks about media from West and East and from Balkan throughout your whole career, especially when you played Roger or Nadal, uh, also with what happened or went wrong last year. You mentioned it yourself with the injury in the last press conference. Just want to know, people have different experience, different uh, mentality, education, me from Germany, people from Balkan, people from America. Regarding this all, uh, how much do you think fair reporting is even possible with people from different backgrounds reporting about the worldwide sport like tennis? Fair reporting? Yeah, fair reporting. Well, well that, that, that's all relative, you know? It's all relative. Uh, fair reporting, in maybe your opinion, in my opinion, is two different things. So I, I think that, you know, what I personally like to, to see is just, you know, um, uh, respect and, and not one dimensional narrative that is focused only on 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 one side of the story and 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 keeps going for a while writing that kind of story in that direction i think it's it's i like to see when someone is taking a different perspective and understanding if writing about me or any other athlete or character and understanding where he comes from and you know trying to be a bit more objective i, I mean that's something I like to see, but again, I respect uh, your profession and I understand that, you know, without you guys and without media, that our sport would not be as, as it is. 
as global and popular. So I, I think that we are all part of the same team in the end of the day. You know, we are all part of this this wonderful sport that I that I feel like we all we all love, and we live out of. Um, and that's all. You know, I understand that there are some people that just uh, uh, are maybe biased. They maybe like me more, like me less. Uh, that, that's it. You know, it's it's really hard to to kind of define that in a, in a simple term. Uh, fair reporting is, <laughs> is is such a broad um, subject, and it's very relative, so it's difficult to to determine what is you know what is the right way.